The question us PC Master Race folks often ask ourselves is, just how much FPS do I really need? Can I really justify the extra one or two hundred pounds on a better graphics card for an extra 10 or 20 FPS in my favorite games? Well, I thought I would put just that to the test. Now, this isn't a perfect test for quite a number of reasons, one of which is that the only monitor I have available here is a 140Hz one, not what's become the gold standard at 240 with that said, this is a blind test, so until we had completed all of the testing, I didn't know any of the results. Right, so what's the test then? Well, to set a baseline and to prove the haters wrong, I'm going to be testing at 30, 60 and 144 FPS, quite common values you'll see when it comes to console and PC gaming. Now the way I'm doing that is using AMD's uh, Radeon Chill, or realistically it's just their frame rate target control under the Chill panel, to fix the FPS at those frame rate values in CSGO. Or more specifically, my partner is while I look away. I then played the game for a few rounds to see if I could notice the difference and to make a guess as to what frame rate I was playing at. The long story short here is that once you go 144 FPS or 144 Hz, you can't go back. I ended up doing 144 Hz first and uh, just as random sampling happened and then I went to 60 Hz and I actually guessed 60 Hz wrong, I thought it was 30 because the noticeable difference between 144 and 60 FPS is just so incredibly, incredibly obvious. And I think that it goes without saying that if I thought 60 FPS was as bad as 30, then 30, well, let's just say I, I refused to actually play the game because it was pretty awful to look at. So now we know that you can tell the difference between 30, 60 and 144, what about a more reasonable test? Something that you might see in graphics card benchmark results, say 100, 120 and 144. Well, that's where it gets interesting, because if you look at those FPS values in terms of how long each frame takes to render, or their frame times, you see that they're actually pretty close, and they actually get closer the higher the FPS you go, as FPS is an average. To give you that in numbers, 100, F or 100 FPS in frame times is 10 milliseconds, whereas at 120, you're looking at 8.3 milliseconds, and when it comes to 144, that's just 6.9 milliseconds. So what about the results? Well, we ran the test multiple times to make sure that the results we were getting were as accurate as we could be, and the long story short here is that I actually couldn't tell the difference between the three. Now, I could see a visual difference between them, but when I was making my guesses as to which uh, you know FPS I was running at, I couldn't reliably get it right. I got a couple correct, I got a kind of second guess myself out of being correct for a couple others, but not reliably and not for sure. When tallying kills and deaths measured per set here, you can see, at least from the average numbers that really speak for themselves, that there's no major performance difference between each of these FPS values. Now that's not to say that it wasn't visually a little bit smoother, a little bit jerkier depending on which one I was sat, you know, testing in, but realistically there was no measurable difference between them. Now that's not to say that more FPS or higher refresh rates or anything else like it is not better to have more of, it definitely is, and maybe you, know, you can tell the difference between what I've tested here. But the point is that for an average gamer like me, it doesn't make a significant difference in at least this fast-paced shooter game, which in theory would be one of the games that would benefit most from this. Now of course, like I said, I'm just an average gamer, I'm nothing incredibly special, and so for certain types of people it will be more relevant, but it's something to, to consider when you're looking at benchmark results for, say, graphics cards, where you're trying to justify spending potentially a significant amount of extra money on a better graphics card, and it's one of the factors that you might be wanting to consider. Of course, this video can only really help you understand one of those factors, and there are plenty of other factors to consider, but hopefully it is helpful in at least that way. So, I've been talking long enough, now it's your guys' turn. Let me know in the comments down below what do you think of the results, is there a way that I could improve the testing methodology, and if there's anything else I've missed, do let me know in those comments down below. If you want to support the channel and keep me making these videos on a Monday, Wednesday and Friday basis, then do hit that subscribe button with a bell notification icon to be notified of those new videos. 
There's also a load of links in the description down below, including Amazon and Overclock Chique affiliate links, which don't cost you anything to use, but massively help me out when you do use them. There's also stuff like merch for hoodies or t-shirts like this one, or actually a load of other designs, including the uh, sort of tech collage one that I really like. And you can also check out stuff like Private Internet Access, which is a great and cheap VPN, and also Humble Mundo for cheap games that support charities too. Otherwise, that is pretty much it. Do check out some other videos over there if you want to keep watching, including stuff like the Radeon anti-lag testing video I did, which is very similar to this one in terms of its topic, but obviously a slightly different feature, so do check that out. And otherwise, if you have any questions, like I said, leave those in the comments down below. Otherwise, we will see you all in the next video.